All right, let's have some fun here. I'm gonna give you the top five baits that yours truly, that I have designed. And I'm very, very proud of the fact that there's over 30 baits on the market that you can catch bass with that I've designed personally. Now, I'm not saying like co-designed or given suggestions to, I'm talking uh, write out the entire uh, schematics, prototype it, um, get the right version and actually uh, design exactly what I want it. So these are the top five baits that I've designed. We're just gonna have some fun with it. Uh, I started out designing baits for the Spro Corporation over 15 years ago. I started missile baits uh, almost 11 years ago and designed baits for both of those companies. And here we are with number five. This was kind of a toss up between the original version and the baby, but I went with the baby because nobody backs the baby into a corner. That's right, baby destroyer. This is a small creature bait, and this is the color I've probably caught more fish on right here. This is green pumpkin flash. As you can see, it's five inches long, totally. Um, it's got these little small appendages on the side. It's got these kind of flapper deals on there. It's got a, that ribbed body. And as you can see, that ribbed body is very, very soft and it bends very easily. It is absolutely murder on a Carolina rig. I've caught so many fish on this thing on a Carolina rig. Green pumpkin flash is not even funny. I'm large mouth in Bassmaster tournaments up to seven pounds, over seven pounds. I uh, caught smallmouth up to five pounds on Carolina rig with it. I've caught spotted bass up to four pounds in competition with it. I mean, just just a killer, killer bait. Caught a bunch of Texas rig in it. It works good around the spawn with a lighter weight. You know, you put like an eighth ounce sinker on there. And the whole key to it is that those little two twin tails are very thin. They're very thin, thinner than any other baits similar to this on the market and you have that when you set the hook it is like you know death you just you just jack them so that's number five the baby destroyer absolutely love that thing that thing lives on a carolina rig in my boat year round no matter where i go because in case of emergency you got a hard bottom carolina rig baby destroyer it's going to put fish in the boat and it can put some big fish in the boat Number four, I really was torn between putting this three and four. So we went with it on four. Uh, and this is the Spro Little John DD. That's right. Here's one of the original baits right here. It's a deep diving crankbait. And it has a soft tungsten weight transfer system in it. When I turn it up like that, I can feel that soft tungsten ball Go to the back, it helps that thing cast like a bullet. Uh, but then when it hits the rest position, that ball comes down to, to this position uh, down in the belly where you want it so that it runs in this position right here. It has that slow float. Uh, but really, the, the part that's unique about it is that bill angle and the bill shape. Now, there's no other deep diving crankbait on the market with that bill angle and that bill shape and has flat sides like that. Um, before I designed this bait, I, I was a huge, huge fan of deep crankbait fishing. Love deep crankbait, still do. Still love deep crankbait fishing, but I, I would always rotate between like three or four different crankbaits. And one of the ones I would throw is a Pose 400, love that. A Fat Free Shad, uh, back in the day, love that. The bigger, the bigger one comparable to this size. I'm not exactly sure. I think it may be a seven, but I'm not positive on the size. And then, um, a DD-22 is a great bait, didn't cast very well, came through cover well. Um, and then, you know, at, at around that same time is when some of the DT baits were starting to get designed. Those are good, but they run really flat and they'll hang up really bad. So I wanted to try to solve a bunch of different problems. And this bait, when it runs, it runs like this. And as you can see, when it runs, uh, the, the treble hooks stay up in a way. So that thing comes through brush tremendously. One of the things that I'm the most proud of, I've caught, I've had multiple top 10s on the Bassmaster Elite Series with this bait. Uh, some of them were actually with this particular bait. 
And I would say one of the things I'm most proud of in addition to that is there are a number of pro anglers that throw this when they're cranking brush because it comes through the brush really well and it triggers a lot of, a lot of, I can't name any names, not going to do that. Uh, but I know a number of them that throw that one. So that's number four on my all time, um, me designed baits. I'm not going to talk in a third person. That's just a little, a little much. Number, number three, number three, here we go. Almost made it four, but it's three. And it's kind of a combination between the baits I'm the most proud of, plus the baits that have sold the most, plus the baits that I've caught the most fish on. So it's kind of a combination of, of my totally arbitrary uh, system. But number three is the Missile Baits Ned Bomb. Now, this is a bait that is specifically designed for fishing on a Ned Rig. And this is Green Pumpkin. This is a, not a new color anybody has never seen before. Uh, but as you can see, it's got that, that spade type t trailer or tail, excuse me. And, and it's got the ringed solid body with that blunted head on the front. Now, the Z-Man TRD is the one that really put the, the Ned Rig on the map. And what they did is they, they consulted with Ned Cady and to get a better understanding. And so they kind of helped, you know, kind of design their bait, which uses Elastec, different plastic, to be able to make exactly what he would want. And he is absolutely, I mean, he loves that bait. So over the years, I have gotten to know Ned Cady myself. Uh, he's an outdoor writer. I've worked with him on a number of other pieces. Uh, he is so humble. He does not call it the Ned Rig. He specifically calls it the Midwest Finesse Rig, which I guess is the proper name, but that's no fun. I like calling it Ned Rig because uh, nobody wants to, everybody wants to forget about Ned Cady. Not me, not me. Um, so before, as I was designing this bait, I was trying to get a comprehension of how to fish it. And then I had long conversations with him of how exactly he fishes the Ned Rig. Uh, he does not drag it on the bottom, which is contrary to what I thought. He lifts and lets the bait glide back to him. Lifts, lets it bait glide back to him until it touches the bottom. Lifts, glide back. That's how he can catch a hundred and some odd fish on this thing and not break them off. Because he does not drag it on the bottom to where the hook can just go er, 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 snag on the bottom. Doesn't happen like that. He uses lighter jig heads because the glide is the key. And so when that was just rummaging around in my brain, I thought, aha, the whole glide is the key. So why not put a big flat tail on the back like we did with our quivers? Why not put that same quiver type tail on the back so that when that bait is, when you lift it up off the bottom, that tail is going to push it, is going to push that bait so that when it comes through the water, it's just going to kind of swim down. You know, it's going to get lifted up and then it's going to kind of swim its way back down. If you fish a really heavy jig, it doesn't matter. It's not going to really do that. And it kind of defeats the purpose of the Ned Rig. But if you're going to have uh, the actual Ned Rig, you're going to use something between a 16th ounce and an 8th ounce. When you lift that thing up and you let it kind of pendulum back to you, it's going to kind of just wander and glide and that is what really triggers those fish to bite. So that's the Ned Rig, Ned Bomb by Missile Baits. We have sold a pile of those, a whole lot of them. A lot of people like to Ned Rig, and apparently people have figured out that the fish like the Ned Bomb as well. So that's the number three. Uh, and that was kind of a toss up in my brain for number one and two. Um, but I think I have settled on, on the one and two. Number two is the Spro Little John. This is the original first bait that I ever designed completely me. And so there, sentimentally, this there's a lot uh, in my brain uh, for this bait. And here is the actual very first sample that I got. I'll take it out of the box here. Uh, I worked with the Spro Corporation to, to make this. Uh, their mold makers are in Japan. It's actually manufactured just outside of Hong Kong. Uh, the baits, that's just where it's made. Most, most of the hard baits are made there. That's just what it is. 
I uh, wish we could make them closer, but that is actually just a solid, it's solid plastic. But this was, they took the gill lines and everything that I wanted and the eye, we were using the eye from the bronze eye frog and now it's become the signature Spro eye. Uh, and they, they had the line tie actually turned sideways on the bottom, which I didn't exactly want it that way. Uh, we changed it later, but I did want it, that line, uh, the hook hanger that way on the, on the back. And we left that uh, because it increases the distance between the two hook hangers. And then we have a brass line tie, which is which I wanted that so that we could make the bait easier to tune. That is a big deal. Uh, but now this is what it, the way it comes packaged. That's the spring crawl, probably the color I've caught the most fish on with the original Little John. And I think pretty dang sure that we've probably sold more uh, spring crawl than any other color in the original Little John. A couple other colors are pretty close, but man, there have been quarters because I get the quarterly reports on on the sales for these things. There have been quarters uh, a handful of years back to where we're talking spring crawl three times as many sales as the next best selling color. That's pretty pretty wild, you know. Uh, but that's a spring crawl. It's a it's a it's really based on an old bandit color that I loved. Uh, and then I drew out, on paper, I drew out those stripes. If they look like a, a cartoon carrier, like a kid drew it, hey, you're looking at the kid. This is the kid that drew those lines on those baits. Uh, and this is one of the original ones. I've caught a gazillion fish on it. Actually, that's not a technical number. Uh, not a politician. Sorry, I made that number up. But this, is, I've caught a pile of fish on that thing. And I, I will take that bill and take one of those little uh, dip and dye markers and, and paint it up orange. And then it kind of really blends in with the whole bait. Look at that, it is, that is just hot right there. Uh, I've had to replace these treble hooks on there multiple times, the Kamikatsus. But that's, uh, that's one of my babies. It's one of the original ones. And I keep that in my to-go box, which means when it's time to make money, I'm going into that to-go box. But the number one bait and really the one that, that put Missile Baits on the map is the Missile Baits D-Bomb and specifically the Bruiser Flash Color. Uh, that is just a moneymaker in a number of ways. Uh, moneymaker for me in Missile Baits. But when we first started Missile Baits uh, back in 2012, three, we started in January. February, March. March was, uh, we had a Bassmaster Elite Series on Lake Okeechobee. Uh, real, nobody had heard of missile baits still. Uh, I mean, we were just pounding everything we can pound, every show, every everything. And uh, my man Ish Monroe came through for me and blew out that Elite Series tournament on Okeechobee using the D-Bomb. They would, that was using Bruiser Flash as one of the original colors, and it is a four and a half inch ribbed body creature bait. He blew that tournament out, and I was just telling everybody that's what he was using. He put it on the back of a Medlock jig. Other guys in the tournament were fishing that Medlock jig, but they did not have that D-bomb on the back. That was definitely the key for him, and uh, I mean, it has been a, just a staple for flipping Pitching, punching, I mean, I can't tell you the number of big fish that I, I mean, I know, I personally know of two over 14 caught on the D-bomb, uh, a fellow Elite Series angler, <clears throat> and I don't think he minds me saying anything, Seth Fighter, he's caught his personal best on a D-bomb, uh, this was back before he had anything to do with Z-Man or, or uh, even the companies prior to that, this was like early on, in his, it was just starting out his career, went to Florida, was trying to learn punching, caught a 14. He sent me the picture, it's pretty wild. It's on the Missile Baits website, if you look under the records portion. But uh, yeah, Bruiser Flash, uh, and really the, the reason I created it <clears throat> was I was trying to create a different bait within a category that I already loved. Uh, the, the Reaction Innovations Sweet Beaver was the original creature bait in this category, the original. It's a really good bait. 
the the purpose of the bait a lot of people think oh this replaces the beaver no 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 no. is there different baits they're different baits they have a different purpose they function differently this bait uh the d-bomb is has a lot more resistance and it's a little bulkier and it's a little bigger the the beaver actually when it falls if you watch it it darts it it doesn't really fall straight it, it more is emulating a tube but with a much better hookup ratio so that that tube or that that beaver falls like a tube and just kind of won't hardly fall straight that is what triggers most of those fish to bite it now if you watch a beaver when it's on the bottom the tails on that are kind of rigid which help it give it that darting action that the weight of the tail kind of swings as it's falling and it helps make that bait you know more erratic d-bomb's totally different d-bomb has very thin appendages it has the ribbed body which just like the baby destroyer will really you know kind of just collapse when you set the hook so the hookup ratios are fantastic the ribbed body allows that hook to stay in there not get hung up on everything and even even when you punch it and all that kind of stuff uh, but the whole key is when that when that bait gets into where it is whether it hits a limb hits a mat hits a it's whatever hits the bottom these thin appendages slowly still open up and fall down and so when that bait it goes boom and it hits the bottom these little appendages are still moving and slowly look so natural look just like a little crawfish or a little brim Thump! that's when a lot of the bass come in get it pick it up <clears throat> i've caught so many fish just on slack line just letting it sit there and then all of a sudden bam <coughs> they just they choke on it just like i am but uh that's the d-bomb that's the number one bait that i feel like i've ever designed uh we've sold so many of them at missile baits it's not even funny which tells me they have put a ton a ton of fish in people's live wells and people's boats uh it, you know caught fish to be able to hold up for the camera i'm very very proud of that fact i mean just oodles and oodles of sixes eights tens and as i mentioned before 14s even uh, that are uh were definitely caught on the d-bomb i just think that's such a cool cool thing one of the guys from tackle warehouse has caught one over 14 uh on the on the d-bomb so very very proud of that and those are the top five baits that i've ever ever designed if you think that i left any out and i didn't count any of the jigs any of the jigs that i've done with iconelli iconelli told me what to do and then i designed it so it was not totally my idea on on any of the jigs but i've he and i collaborate on those uh, he tells me what he wants and then i and i you know basically figure out how to make that and um so that's i don't count those as uh sold baits that i've designed but if you think i left any out please drop it down there in the comments i would love to hear what you have to think about that uh, and i appreciate you guys watching